SpaceX is rapidly advancing with its Starship project. Recently, there has been significant activity suggesting that another major launch could be just a few weeks away, pending the approval of the required launch license. In preparation for this upcoming launch, SpaceX has recently conducted an important test at Starbase. We'll discuss this test and other key developments in this video. Before we dive into the details, remember to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on Starship and other important SpaceX news. About a month ago, Ship 25 and Booster 7 achieved a significant milestone in SpaceX's Starship program by successfully completing a launch. This event was a crucial step in validating the design and functionality of the Starship system. And now, they are advancing rapidly towards the third flight test of its Starship program, with significant progress being made on Ship 28. Just a couple of days ago, Ship 28 was rolled to suborbital Pad B to complete engine testing. The vehicle has already undergone two cryogenic proof tests and spent two and a half months at the ship stand receiving engines and upgrades. The testing schedule for Ship 28 is expected to be condensed, possibly including a cryo-proof, a six-engine spin prime, and a six-engine static fire before it's ready for stacking with Booster 10. Booster 10, the counterpart to Ship 28 in the Flight 3 stack, has also been undergoing preparations. It received its hot stage ring and was placed on a new booster transport stand designed for easier movement and stacking onto the orbital launch mount. Like Ship 28, Booster 10's testing may include a cryo-proof, a 33-engine spin prime, and a 33-engine static fire. Regarding the orbital launch pad, after the second flight test, Musk noted that the pad needed minimal refurbishment. SpaceX has since been working on pad refurbishment, including inspecting or replacing hold-down clamps, removing parts of the booster quick disconnect, and repairing damage from Flight 2. They are also upgrading the orbital tank farm to enhance capacity and loading capability, potentially reducing propellant load times for the full stack from 90 to 45 minutes. And just yesterday, a significant development was observed at the launch complex. The Super Heavy Booster 10 was transported to the site, joining Starship 28. Both are now poised for an intensive test campaign. Standing 69 meters tall, Booster 10 is powered by 33 Raptor 2 engines arranged in a series of rings. These engines are fed by a liquid oxygen tank and a methane tank, essential for the booster's operation. The Booster Quick Disconnect System, a critical feature located on the orbital launch table, plays a vital role in fueling the booster. This system retracts shortly before the booster's first motion. Additionally, the booster is equipped with composite overwrapped pressure vessels and electronic units vital for its functioning. The booster's design also includes large grid fins for control during descent through the atmosphere, similar to those on Falcon 9 but much larger. Starship 28, the upper part of the rocket, complements the Super Heavy booster. This section, standing 50 meters tall, is equipped with three sea-level Raptor 2 engines and three vacuum-optimized Raptor 2 engines. These engines are enclosed in a skirt that also provides a structural element for connecting the booster and ship. Starship features a unique stage separation mechanism, where all six Raptor engines ignite, pushing the vehicle away from the booster. This is made possible by the hot stage ring that allows the exhaust from Starship's engines to expand outwards. Notably, Starship 28 has a payload bay designed for deploying Starlink satellites. Recently, Ship 28 underwent important tests, including a spin prime test, which checks the pumps on the rocket to ensure they can inject fuel and oxidizer into the engines during later tests and at the time of launch. The next step after a spin prime test is typically a static fire test, which is crucial in assessing the readiness of the rocket for launch. SpaceX's approach to these developments has been systematic and transparent, with regular updates shared on social media platforms. This openness has allowed enthusiasts and the public to closely follow the progress of these groundbreaking projects. The company's efficiency and determination are evident in their quick actions, such as rolling out Booster 10 to the launch pad and conducting tests on Ship 28. 
SpaceX's future plans for the Starship program are ambitious and involve a series of launches that extend well beyond the third and fourth flights. For the fourth flight, Ship 29 and Booster 11 are already being prepared, with Ship 29 currently undergoing modifications and pre-flight work. Following this, Flight 5 is expected to involve Ship 30 and Booster 12, with Ship 30 in the final stages of preparation and Booster 12 ready for cryogenic proof testing. Looking at the broader perspective, SpaceX's Starship is envisioned to play a crucial role in future lunar missions. According to NASA, the Starship lunar lander missions will require nearly 20 launches. This number is significantly higher than what SpaceX's leadership previously claimed. The missions will involve multiple launches of the Starship Super Heavy system, including one launch to place a propellant depot into orbit, followed by several tanker versions of Starship transferring methane and liquid oxygen propellants into the depot. Finally, the lander version of Starship will rendezvous with the depot, fill its tanks, and proceed to the moon. These launches are expected to take place from both SpaceX's current pad in Texas and the one under construction at the Kennedy Space Center. Additionally, Musk has outlined plans for future upgrades to the Starship Super Heavy launch system. These upgrades are aimed at enhancing the lift capacity and operational efficiency of the launch system. Musk envisioned Starship as a rapidly reusable launcher with the capacity to operate a fleet that can be relaunched in days or hours. The current Starship Super Heavy design already has twice the lift capacity of NASA's Space Launch System and the Apollo-era Saturn V moon rockets. And with future engine upgrades, it's expected to achieve even greater thrust. These developments are part of SpaceX's overarching goal to revolutionize space technology and make it possible for humans to live on other planets. To give you some perspective on how the Starship is truly revolutionary, consider this. The estimated cost for each Starship launch is about $40 million, a stark contrast to the over $2 billion cost per launch for NASA's SLS. This dramatic reduction in cost, made possible by SpaceX's innovative approach and focus on reusability, is not just about making space travel more affordable. It's about opening up new possibilities in space exploration, colonization, and even interplanetary travel, all while making these endeavors more accessible and frequent. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.